In this video, we'll discuss about Futex, fast user space mutex. Futex is basically a Linux system core. It is used as a building block for constructing synchronization primitives like logs, semaphores, etc. Futex basically resolves two issues. One is wake up before waiting. In lock release scenario, there can be a data race between the wake up signal and the other thread which is going to sleep. What could happen is the wake up signal could be received even before the other thread has actually gone to sleep. The second issue is related to performance. In a simple implementation of a lock, even when the lock is not contended, then there can be a context switch during lock acquire and lock release. This is bad for the scalability of the lock. Futex is implemented in the user library and the kernel layers. User library makes a system called Futex system call and the kernel library implements that system call. But in case if you need some special specific synchronization primitive, you can actually make the Futex system call from the application layer as well. Before we discuss about Futex, let's just discuss the issues we mentioned in detail. First is wake up before waiting. For this, let's consider a simple log implementation. Here, first let's see what are all the states that need to be maintained. You will have a flag, boolean flag, to indicate whether the log is acquired or is it free. Next, you will have a queue of threads that are waiting for this log. Finally, you have a guard that ensures protected access to these two states. Now let's look into a flow where the state changes. First, a thread T1 comes and acquires the log. At this point, let's see what are all the state changes that is going to happen. First, T1 had acquired the guard. It had changed the state to occupied. It released the guard and it proceeded. Now T2 has arrived, T2 is going to wait for the lock. First, it acquires the guard. It checks the state. State is occupied, so it registers itself as a waiter. It releases the guard. At this point, a sleep system call is made so that the thread T2 goes to sleep. Now, when T1 releases the lock, it first acquires the guard. It changes the state to available. It removes a waiter. It makes a system call to wake up that waiter. Right? So this is the change of state during these scenarios. But now let's discuss these two particular state. Waiting for T2 waiting for the lock and T1 releasing the lock in bit more detail. So as we discussed, these are all those actions that are performed. First, T2 acquires the guard, checks the state, registers as a waiter, releases guard, goes to sleep. T1 acquires the guard, set the state as free, wakes up T2 and then releases guard. This, this is fine. If it happens in this particular order, it is fine. But the order could have been changed as below. After T2 has released the guard, T1 could have acquired the guard, it could have chosen T2 and it would have sent a system call to wake up T2. This is a no-op system call because the kernel does not know about the thread T2. It is not in blocking state, so it's a no-op. Then T1 will release the guard and proceed. Now T2 goes to sleep. What would happen? 
there is a chance that T2 might never be woken up. So one thing is to address this wake up before waking. We need some level of interaction with the kernel. The next issue we are going to discuss about is unnecessary context switch. For this, let's consider the implementation type opic handle. In this implementation type, the law is entirely implemented at the kernel level. We need to make system call for each and every operation. On initialization, from your application, you are going to make the system call to init the log. As a response, you are going to get an handle. For log acquire, you are going to pass this particular handle. If the lock is free, your thread will return back. Otherwise, it will be put to sleep at the kernel only. During release, you again pass the hand. If there are any thread waiting for that particular log, it would be open up. After that, the control will be returned back to the user space. So what we see here is even in uncontended scenarios, unnecessary switch to the kernel happen in this implementation. Now we'll see how Futex addresses these issues. Before that, let's understand what are all the operations supported under the Futex system call. Number one, Futex wait. This operation takes two parameters. One is a pointer to a 32-bit integer. Next is a value. During this system call, the kernel would check whether the value pointed to this address has the same value as the second parameter. If it is true, the calling thread would be put to sleep, else the control will be returned immediately. The next system call is Qtex wake. It takes two parameter, address and value. Address is used to identify the Futex. Value specifies the number of threads that needs to be broken up by the kernel. Now let's look into a simple log implementation using the Futex system call. Before that, let's see what are all the state that needs to be maintained at the user space and at the kernel space. First, at the user space, you have a variable called value. This variable's address and value is what we would be passing during the Futex system call. This variable will be atomically incremented and decremented. Next, at the kernel, we have a map of a key of to a physical address to a value of waiting thread. Please note, this physical address is different from the user space address. Whatever we mentioned here is the user space address, but the corresponding physical address, hardware address is what is being used at the kernel level. Now let's look at a flow when there is no contention for the log. Initially, the value is set to zero, which means the lock is free. Now, during lock acquire, first thing is the value is atomically incremented. It becomes one. The old value is zero and the new value is one. Is the old value equal to equal to zero? Yes. So now the thread is assumed to have acquired the lock and it can proceed further. Similarly, during lock release, first the value is decremented atomically. Now, since the old value is equal to one, the thread is assumed to have released the lock and it can proceed. As you can see here, there is no context which happening to the kernel when there is no contention. Now let's look at the case when there is contention for the lock. Initially, the state of the variable is 1. 
which implies that the lock is busy. Now, when a thread attempts to acquire the lock, it will first atomically increment the value. It will check whether the old value is equal to zero. It is not. So at this point, a few text wait system call will be triggered with the address of the variable and the value, current value of the variable. At the kernel, the value referenced by the address will be compared with the second parameter. In case if it is not same, the control will return immediately and the thread has to redo all these operations. But let's assume it is true. In this case, the kernel will save the current thread in the map. Next, it will put the current thread to sleep. Now let's see what would happen when a lock release happens when there are some waiting threads for the futex. First, the value is decremented atomically. The old value is compared against one. A futex wake up system call would be triggered now with the address and a value of 1. This implies this thread intends to wake up one thread. The kernel will check first if there are any waiting thread for this futex. If no, no thread are waiting on this futex, it would have released the lock immediately. On the other case, it is going to remove one of the thread and is going to wake it up. The woken up thread can now try to acquire the lock again. The previous thread would be written to the user space and it can proceed. Note here, between the operation save thread and put thread to sleep is where the wake up before waiting issue happens. But here in this case, since all these operations are performed at the kernel level, this can be avoided by a couple of approaches. One simple approach would be a coordination between the Futex system call and the scheduler to ensure these two operations are atomic. A simple log implementation has a couple of issues. Let's see what are they. In the contended case, initially the value is set to 1, which means the lock is busy. Now, when a thread attempts to acquire the lock, it will increment the value atomically. Then a comparison will happen with the old value. It would fail, so a system call will be triggered. The value now passed to the system call is the value 2. At this point, another thread can come and try to acquire the lock. So, now the value will be changed to 3. The old value will be compared. Since it's not 0, a futex wait system call will be triggered with the value 3. Now, what would happen? At the kernel level, for the first thread, the value comparison will happen. It will not match. It expects the value 2, but currently at the address, what we have is 3. So, the thread 1 would be required to perform all its activities again. So, thread 1 now increments the value once more atomically. So, now the value becomes 4. At this point, the comparison at the kernel will fail for thread 2 as well. So, as you can see, a ping pong between these two threads can occur infinitely. Another minor issue with this is, you see, like effectively, there is not even a single thread waiting for the futex, but already the value has increased to 4. Due to this thrashing, we could even end up in a scenario where this value overflows 32 bit. How can this be resolved? Here is the implementation taken from futexes or tricky paper which tries to address the issue. It will be tedious to go in depth into the implementation, but let me explain the basic idea. Here, the value is limited to two. 
at no point in time can the value be increased above 2 so that we can prevent the overflow 1. Next thing is only the first thread is going to increment the value from 1 to 2. All other threads are going to ensure that the value remains at 2. Futex has a few additional features. One is inter-process coordination. In case if we created the variable value in the shared memory segment, then we can use Futex to implement the inter-process coordination. Second, Futex supports priority inversion. What is priority inversion? Priority inversion is the mechanism where a higher priority thread waiting for a particular log can temporarily lease its priority to the owner of the log in case if the owner of the log has a lesser priority. Three, requeuing support. Requeuing support is specifically needed in the case in cases similar to a monitor. In a monitor, Assume during a wake up call. During a wake up on a condition, we might wake up all the threads waiting on that condition. But of all the thread woken up, only one thread would be able to acquire the mutex again and proceed further. So, what happens is instead of just giving a futex wake up, we can give a futex wake up with requeue. What it would do at the kernel level is one of the thread would be woken up and released. The, all the other thread would be directly pulled from the condition and would be made to wait on the mutex of the monitor. These are all the references for this particular presentation.